Another day, another story time. <laughs> hello gorgeous, welcome back to my channel, or hello if you're new, and if you are new, it would mean so much if you guys click the subscribe button to join my YouTube family because I do upload every single week, and low key my neighbor is staring at me filming right now. I promise I'm not a creep. Recently I did a whole video about my creepy boss story time and you guys seem to love that so I will link it above and down below as well as my whole story time playlist which definitely go check out there's so much tea in those story times but I wanted to do the time that I had the worst creepy co-worker this was actually from the same job the boss was from so I dealt with a lot of interesting people in that job comment down below if you've ever had mean or horrible co-workers I'm curious to hear your stories I know that so many people deal with this on a daily basis. Thumbs it up if you like it. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. You can always message me on there at NicoletaXOYT and let's just get into the story. So like I said, this is the same job that I had with my creepy boss. A lot of you guys probably know now when I was 16 years old, I applied to be a gymnastics coach and I actually was a competitive gymnast for many years. It was my first big girl job and I was so ecstatic when I ended up getting the job and it ended up being my job for many, many years. I think I worked there for six years if maybe longer through high school through university even after university a little bit I still work there before it shut down I definitely saw a lot of people come in and out of that job a lot of the coaches would be young there were older coaches but a lot of them would come through and usually what would happen is when it would be university time they would end up quitting because usually they would go off to university and it was too far so they couldn't keep the job so that is why we had a lot of people come in and out it definitely wasn't a job that people kept for a long time for the most part. There were some people that were there for many years like I was, but I met some interesting ones. And this was actually right when I got hired on. It was one of the original co-workers that were there. It, he, mm, I've used so many names now that I don't want to use the same one. So let's call him Mike. I don't think I've used a Mike before. So we're going to go with Mike. I had this guy at my work named Mike and he was actually, I believe my age or he was one year older, but we were, I remember probably the same age at the time. So I was 16, he was 16, maybe 17. When I first came in, he was super nice to me and he's like, hey, what's your name? I'm Mike. He definitely, I'm assuming, saw me. As you guys will hear the story, I'm assuming when he saw me, he thought I was cute and that's why he was probably being so nice to me at the beginning. I would talk to him at work, obviously. He was more near my age. At that time, there was actually a lot more older co coaches um, during that period when I was first hired. So he was someone near my age and I was really, really nervous and shy when I first started working. Whenever I'm nervous, I'm so shy. I'm like a mute. I barely talk. And I swear when I'm nervous, I sometimes say just like the most random things that shouldn't come out of my mouth but it, it just comes out. I was so nervous because it was obviously my first job and these were all new different people and it was a completely new thing for me. Your first job I feel like is always kind of nerve wracking. Mike helped me learn the ropes and kind of trained me a little bit. Everyone was really good at helping teach me things. Every single day when you're a gymnastics coach, you're assigned a class. And now that I'm remembering, I think I did start becoming a coach when I was 15, but I was about to turn 16, so that's why I just say 16. But when you're 15 and you're a coach, you can't be a coach on your own. You have to be 16 and get certified to be able to train your own classes. So when I first started, I would join other coaches and work with them. And I would sometimes occasionally work with Mike and sometimes Mike would want me to work with him, want to take me for the hour to work with his kids. And he was super nice and fun. And we actually lived pretty close to each other. He went to a different high school, but we lived not too far from each other. But when I first went in, I did not think anything of him. Like, it's not like I was interested. He was just, like I said, a coworker to me. So obviously I'm gonna be nice to all my coworkers. It wasn't on that level or anything. I just needed to clear that up. So at the beginning as well, you always do a warm up with all the kids. Even if they're not in your class, you'll do like a 10, 15 minute warm up, and then you'll end up separating the kids and take your class and then train them um, and do gymnastics with them. It was so nerve wracking too, because all the parents would be behind you, like watching from a glass. And let me tell you, sometimes the parents were the issues. They came with a ton of complaints and you would definitely deal with not the nicest parents to you and they were really really picky sometimes and really 
rude to say the least. Sometimes there was the sweetest parents and they were so easy and then you would get those really nasty parents that wanted their kid to be like an Olympic gymnast and they were just not too good at it and they would just be horrible and take it out on you and uh, the stories I have with some of the parents is intense and a lot of the times when parents would yell at us for apparently not doing a good job I would just stand there and not know what the heck to say I would be so scared and shy still kind of new obviously and I'm learning how to become a gymnastics coach and I was actually was booked to go get training so I could officially become a gymnastics coach. So one day I was at home and the house phone rings and I really never pick up the house phone. My parents usually pick it up. If I'm gonna talk to my friends, it was usually honestly through Facebook at the time. <laughs> and I had like a cell phone, but honestly it was a crappy pay as you go cell phone. So I really couldn't even talk on that cell phone. I would occasionally text, but most of it would be via Facebook and MSN if that was still a thing. Wow, I'm really old. My dad picks up the phone and then gives the phone to me and tells me it's for me. And I'm just like, who is calling me? And I pick up the phone and it's Mike and okay when this happened not gonna lie I was actually really nervous because I feel like only people can relate if your parents were strict but growing up my parents were quite strict on me and my parents were really strict when it came to boys so when that happened I was like so annoyed that he even called me on my house phone but of course when he first called me I'm assuming it's for work maybe they're asking me to come in for a shift or something went on or my shifts cancel who knows or changed I have no idea so I'm just thinking he's gonna tell me something about work but nope Mike continues to go on and ask me on a date and mind you I obviously never gave Mike my number the way that he found my number which he ended up telling me is he went into the office and in the office there's a binder with all the co-workers numbers on it of course and that binder was my boss's binder so he snuck in to the office and looked at the binder wrote my number down and then called me when he got home to ask me on a date I was not interested in Mike at all like I said I was 15 turning 16 I was not interested in him I didn't want to go on a date and honestly my parents would have never allowed that so um, that was not happening so I just proceeded to go on and tell him that um, no thank you <laughs> I remember I felt so embarrassed. I had no idea what to say. And I just remember two words coming out of my mouth. No, thank you. Honestly, I didn't know what to say. I felt so awkward because my parents were standing right there and he was, I, I was nervous even to talk to him and I didn't want it to be awkward when I went to work. So I ended up, I guess, getting off the phone with him. We hung up and my parents were asking me what he wanted. I made some sort of excuse as telling them um, he was asking about something about work. I don't know, I just couldn't be bothered. And so I go back into work and I'm kind of nervous going into the ship because I don't want it to be awkward. Boy, it was awkward. His whole demeanor changed after that one rejection. I guess he couldn't take the rejection of the 16 year old girl. After I rejected him and basically said no thank you to his date offer, he was a completely different person. He couldn't stand me anymore. He wanted nothing to do with me. He was so rude. He would go say hi to everyone and hug them and say what's up and then he would look at me and kind of give me a dirty look and then walk away when I was new still at this point he would make me do the um, warm-ups because he knew that I wasn't like the greatest at it yet so he would put me on the spot and all the parents were like staring at me and I felt so uncomfortable he would try and do stuff kind of to sabotage me a lot of the times just because I was not interested in him I remember telling my other co-workers like I just don't like him like that and he would start talking about me around the gym and say horrible nasty stuff he had me on Facebook and he would come back in and kind of make fun of my pictures on Facebook and say stuff in front of parents and people that honestly made me so embarrassed and this was all because I rejected him for one date can we just take that in does he expect to force me on a date this is why 
I always say let the girl give you the number. I feel like that's such an invasion in privacy to steal someone's number. If they're interested, trust me, you will know. They're gonna want you to have their number and I clearly did not want him to have my number, hence why he had to go into the office and steal my number. It was not really fun. So he was actually there for like a couple years before he finally went off. It was like he was graduated and he was going to some sort of school. I actually think he was like going into the military, but I don't know if that ended up happening. He would always try to talk to girls at the gym to try and make me jealous, but it would never work because I was just never into him like that. Obviously, you're not gonna make someone jealous if they don't like you in that kind of way, but he would try. He would always like get a girl and like hug her and say things really loud obnoxiously loud so that I could hear it and you could tell and he would look back and do you know all these like little teenage drama boy stuff it was a lot and it was actually becoming really overwhelming I remember I never wanted to go to work when he was there because he would just make my life a living hell essentially he ended up getting a girlfriend and I was like hallelujah thank you Finally, someone said yes to this boy, and once he got a girlfriend, he completely stopped being mean to me anymore. He was so focused, I guess, on that girl that he couldn't care less anymore about me, and I was so happy about that. It was never really normal after that because for such a long time, a year or two, he was a complete just horrible person to me. So you can't really erase the last two years of what he did to me. There would be times when it was like the summer, let's say I would do camp a lot of the time during summer. He would like leave me with the kids and go off and do whatever. Sometimes a girl would come in and he would go off and talk to her and it was just horrible. He put me in horrible situations so I feel like he could have never came back from that but he was definitely a lot nicer to me. Once he got a girlfriend, he was probably the co-worker of hell. It all stemmed from one rejection of a date. And honestly, if this boy only knew anyways, my parents, uh, my parents were hella strict. So you weren't uh, gonna come in to my life anyways, even if I was interested in you. That was that, that was my horrible coworker story. Let me know, like I said, any of your stories in the comments down below. I'm curious to hear them. If you guys want, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at NicoletaXOIT. I love talking to you guys over on there and click the subscribe button to join my YouTube family. I do upload every single week. But on that note, I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye.